On behalf of St. Bernard Catholic School, I welcome all of you as you share in this special Mass with us. Each of you who are here have helped these young adults reach this stage of their journey. We gather to say thanks to God for all that has been and for the gifts and graces they need as they set out on the next stage of life's journey, high school. Please join us in our opening song. Buenas tardes. En nombre de la Escuela Católica San Bernardo, les doy la bienvenida a todos ustedes mientras comparten esta misa especial con nosotros. Cada uno de ustedes que está aquí ha ayudado a estos jóvenes a llegar a esta etapa de su viaje. Nos reunimos para agradecer a Dios por todo lo que ha sucedido y por los dones y gracias que necesitan al emprender y la siguiente etapa del viaje de la vida, la escuela secundaria. Unas a nosotros en nuestra canción de apertura. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the Holy Spirit. You may join me with you on this, this joyous day of graduation for your grace. My name is Father Kevin Ripley. Um, helping out today as Father Adam is away, but I am the, uh, what I know of my time is, and I'm the director of the first year of seminary in our diocese, the Kairos year, also a chaplain over at UWGB for the, that was since last July. Before that, I was chaplain down at Ashcraft Glory Academy, so I got to know uh, quite a few uh, of, um, of eighth grade graduations down there, so it's, it's an awesome time of year for y'all to be able to see your moment on going to high school next year, so congrats. And we bring this all together in prayer, uh, giving thanks to God 
asking him to bless you and to help us all encounter uh, God in this holy mass, especially as we do this. Today is also a special day. It's the feast day of a bunch of saints who were martyred, um, St. Charles, the long gun, and his companions. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that later. That's why we're here today. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrary of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to an everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in our name, the blood of the martyrs, the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanda and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Beloved, may grace and peace be yours in abundance through knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has bestowed on us everything that makes for life and devotion, through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and power, though these he has bestowed on us, the precious and very great promises, so that though them you may come to share in our divine nature, after escaping from the corruption that is the world because of evil desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, Virtue with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with devotion, devotion with mutual affection, mutual affection with love. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and left on a journey. At the proper time, he sent a servant to the tenants to obtain from them some of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent them another servant, and that one they beat over the head and treated shamefully. He sent yet another whom they killed. So to many others, some they beat, others they killed. He had one other to send, a beloved son. He sent, him, he sent him to them last of all, thinking, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him and killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come put the tenants to death and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture passage, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. They were seeking to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, for they realized that he had addressed the parable to them. So they left him and went on their way. The Gospel of the Lord. Were you able to pick up on that story Jesus just said? This parable? of a man owning a vineyard and sending these servants to, to kind of get the harvest back and to reap the harvest. And each time these servants were beaten or, or killed. And finally he sends his beloved son thinking, yes, they'll respect him. And he's killed. This is a parable of our Lord Jesus and God the Father sending his only son whom he loved and who died for us. And the offer is there for us to accept that gift, that great gift God has given of eternal life, or to reject that relationship with God. So just hold on to that. But first, so there's pivotal moments in our life. They come in many, many forms, right? Many forms. For me, when I graduated from eighth grade, it was in Pulaski Middle School. So I grew up in Pulaski, which you know where that is. It's like west, like 20 minutes west of here, a little uh, town. And finishing eighth grade, going into high school the next year, opened up new possibilities. Grades got reset. More sports and clubs were going to be available for me to try and different leadership opportunities. I was going to be able to meet new friends once again next year. 
I was old enough to do this one uh, summer expedition thing, like going outdoors. It was called Catholic Youth Expeditions. So I did that between my eighth and ninth grade year. A lot of different things. But it was that last one that really had the biggest impact, I think. I got to go on this, this, this thing called an expedition. We went camping, basically. It was on an island at the time in the bay. So just out in the bay, way up. It's called Chambers Island, if you've heard of it. But there was like this place where Catholics could go camping. And we would have uh, it'd be, it'd be ultimate frisbee, and we would, we would eat good food, and we'd camp overnight, and we'd do bonfires, and, and we'd celebrate the Mass. And we'd have time to pray, time to go to confession, time to grow in friendship with one another. And there was one evening on that expedition, again, right, between eighth and ninth grade, where we were in the woods, and the priest bought, brought out the Eucharist, Jesus, and the Eucharist, placed the Eucharist on the altar, and we prayed before God. I didn't really know it at first, but all of a sudden, I recognized in this moment of grace, like, boom, this is Jesus, and he loves me. I just felt this, like, wash over me. Uh, I began to cry, and I, um, I, like, I was like, really into weightlifting and um, things, and I didn't like want to be crying in front of all these other peers of you know student you know fellow like class you know people the same age and and there were high schoolers on that as well like so I'd like look away from the Eucharist and I'd look back and I'd be crying I just knew how much God loved me in that moment and for me it it just changed everything that there was more to the faith than I ever had known and I came to realize how precious it is. In our first reading, Peter wrote, He has bestowed on us the precious and very great promises. The promises God gives us are precious Promises of forgiveness of our sins. Promises of eternal life. Promises of being filled with the Holy Spirit that we might experience joy. Promises that God would be with us through every point of our life. That ideally he would want us with him forever. Promises that we can find healing from things that we're struggling with. Promises that he knows the plans he has for us and their plans for our good. These are precious promises. Yes, it was that time of my life where I first started to realize how much more to the Christian faith there is than I had ever known. But also a time of life where my innocence of thinking everything was good in the world began to be taken away. Yeah, going into high school, although my family was going to Mass every Sunday, even when we'd be away on uh, vacations and going to sporting events, made it a point to make sure to go to Mass. We were doing a lot of the things. I was going on uh, retreats every now and then, like that one expedition I just mentioned. But I didn't really know what it meant to have Jesus right at the center of my life, or first in my life, until, let's say about halfway through college. I went to UW-Madison to study mechanical Engineering. Now, the reason why I went to study mechanical engineering was because in eighth grade, I began to be better at math, mathematics. And I also had a great passion for art and designing things. And when a teacher from the high school came to my eighth grade class and showed us 
a 3D printed little keychain that the high schoolers had made. I was like, that's it. I'm going to be an engineer. I know it. It was awesome. And actually, I finished engineering college and got with my final project in school. Uh, there's this thing, it's like a final project in college. I got an international and a US patent for something that I had engineered. It was pretty awesome. But by that time in college, at the end, I knew God was calling me to be a priest. So in college, there is this growth, this study, learning about what it is, who is God, who is Jesus, what do we really believe, asking the big questions, right? Not, even, not only in college, not only in high school, not only even now, even in past years, you guys have been up against a lot of things saying, you gotta make decisions, you gotta make choices, right? People ask you to do things or suggest different ideas like, but what do we actually believe? What do I really believe? So for me in college, that was a big time of asking all those questions. We don't need to start until then. And when you probe, when you ask, when you search, when you, when you, when you, when you go towards the truth, in a sense, the truth will almost come back and find you. But if we, but if we turn away and, and don't want to look for the truth, we're going we're gonna to kind of just fade away. See, I, there is this, I mentioned there's pivotal moments in our life, right? There, for me, there is this turning point in college where for the longest time I had thought that me and my achievements and my career were probably the most important things to consider and to work towards. And in terms of career, I talked about engineering achievements. I was on the, the rowing team for the Badgers. We're, we're a Division I team, like, I was in the varsity. We're, it was pretty awesome. But like, I realized, well, yeah, we can achieve these great things. But what's it all for in the end? What's it all for? Is it to give glory to myself, to give glory to God? What's my career for? Why am I trying to build these great things and, and make the earth a better place? If not for the Lord not for love of God and love of my neighbors. There is something or someone much more important to live for. And that was the person I had met back in the summer after eighth grade graduation. That's our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who I had sort of kept in a box, so to speak, up till then, that I would open and, and close as I willed, when I thought convenient, when I would pay attention to God for an hour or so on Sunday or meet with some friends during the week for a Bible study. But little by little, that box stayed open longer and longer and longer that God was inviting me to give my all, to give all my life for him. And that looks like many different things. It doesn't look like sitting in a church all day by no means, unless you become a monk or a religious sister, a nun, um, which even they don't sit in the church all day. <laughs> okay? But it's to live our life for love of God and for love of our neighbor. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, Wants so much for us, for our sake, that he would be the center of our lives, first in our lives. And it's possible. He's right there, knocking at the door. Knocking at the door. And is there for us to open the door? Or close it, or keep it closed? Just think of that gospel story again. It's, it's kind of a sad story. It, it's about God throughout the ages coming to his people and his people rejecting him. And he said that, in a sense, Jesus is the, the stone rejected by the builders. He's referring to the temple. But Jesus himself would be the cornerstone of the church, the cornerstone of our faith. 
the cornerstone of our lives, really the center of our lives. Is Jesus the center of my life? Or am I any better than those who have crucified Jesus? Whenever I sin, in a sense, I join in that act of crucifying our Lord. But little by little, he can come into our hearts and grow. That space in our hearts for him can grow and grow and grow. He can fill it because he is infinite. And his love is infinite for each one of you and for me. That's a great gift, a great gift that he offers for us. Just last thing I mentioned today, there's this St. Charles Luanga. He and 21 of his companions, way over in Uganda, in Africa, were in a situation where they had to choose. This is in the end of the 1800s. They were put in a situation where they had to listen to this king who was asking them to commit a very big sin or they would be killed. And they, as Christians, together chose not to sin. And they were martyred, meaning they gave their lives for their faith. And get this, St. Charles, he was 26, but the youngest in that group was 13. What an amazing witness. And their faith, their conviction that God is truth, Jesus is the life, the way, and the truth, that God loves us so much was so strong that they were willing to give their lives to witness to that faith. And from that witness, within three years, there were very few Christians in Uganda. Within three years, there were 10,000, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a very small area. <laughs> and it was radical to be Catholic, to be Christian. And that was their, their courageous witness, their faith because they chose to accept Jesus as their Savior and to follow him with all their hearts. That's the offer. This summer can even be a prime opportunity to dive even more into that. But especially we come to this Holy Mass where God comes to us, where Jesus who died for us is made present. And we can say yes today. Yes, God, come into my life even more. Please respond with Lower Year of Prayer for the sure steady desire of its youth to see the gospel message might help renew the faith of God's people everywhere. We pray to the Lord. For the graduating eighth grade class, that their search for knowledge and truth through study, prayer, and work will help bring about the truth and peace of God's kingdom, that they may continue to be the light of Christ for others. We pray to the Lord. For the students of St. Bernard School, that many of them discover their God-given gifts and talents. Let them be open to the Holy Spirit to use their gifts well for their own good and the good of others. We pray to the Lord. 
For all parents, but especially for the parents of this eighth grade class, let us pray in thanksgiving for the continued support and encouragement they have provided for us in our education now and forever. We pray to the Lord. For the acts of kindness shown to us during our school years at St. Bernard, but especially this past school year by Father Adam, Mr. Gusloff, teachers, staff, and all members of the St. Bernard School community, we pray to the Lord. Let us take a moment to remember anyone who is not here with us today. We pray that wherever they may be, they know and feel the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear and answer these our prayers in accordance with your perfect will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, the glory of We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than to sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone. Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firmness all. 
and in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we are praying. sacrifice in the offerings to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we are humbly before you. By the same Spirit, graciously and holy, these sins we have brought to you in consecration, that they may be found in the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, that through the man we celebrate in his mysteries. For on the night which we pray, he himself took prayer. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and he gave you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your God, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim true journey. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
and saying graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, you gather to yourself all your children and scatter throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind of witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world of all that is good. Through O God, my God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Peace I leave you, my peace I leave you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us all bring each other a sign of God's peace.
Give all the Lamb of God. Give all Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. The Jesus and my mother, the only Savior of earth, and my soul shall be.
Please stay. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help men to endure torment we pray. May us, in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in truth, be Christ our Lord. Good to see you. Welcome everyone, bienvenidos a todos, guests, families, staff, and the class of 2024. Estamos reunados aquí hoy para celebrar este momento especial. We are here to celebrate this special moment together, and it sure feels pretty special. It's, I think it's only fitting that uh, I start off uh, as we do every day. Uh, at this school and reminding you of our mission. St. Bernard Catholic School is rooted in the teachings of Jesus Christ and our patron saint. This mission emphasizes being peaceful and prayerful. It's guided your journey at St. Bernard, nurturing your academic, moral, and spiritual growth. Know that this mission is deeply ingrained within you, whether you realize it or not. It's shaping your path ahead and guiding you to make meaningful contributions to the world. Today marks the end of a significant chapter, but the beginning of a new one filled with promise and possibilities. I ask that you take time to reflect on the lessons of compassion, faith, and service that have been imparted to you by your teachers, family, and friends during your time at St. Bernard. In the book of Jeremiah, we are reminded of God's promise. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Each of you hold a unique purpose in this world. 
As you start this new chapter, remember that you are never alone. Our school and faith community will comp- continue to support, pray, and encourage you every step of the way. I extend my heartfelt thank you to each one of you. I'm truly grateful to witness the profound impact that the class of 2024 has made on our school and our staff. Remember, remember this, once a bear, always a bear. Congratulations and felicidades. Uh, it's this time that I'm going to invite up, uh, we have a guest, uh, Mr. Malloy. I'm going to invite up him. I'm going to invite up Ms. Dudzik, our assistant principal. I'm also going to invite up our eighth grade teachers, Ms. McDonald and Ms. Kramer. And it's going to be our presentation of the diplomas to the class of 2024. Marvin Aguilar. Abby Albrecht. Jocelyn Andrade. Alejandro Avila Zaragoza. Christian Bustamante. Abigail Butterfield. Oliver Castro. Kimberly Aisha Castro Santiago. Nathan Cisneros. Cody James Connard. Grayson Drab. Maximiliano Gallegos Salas. Elise M. Gerlikowski. Sandra Marie Hernandez. <clears throat> Ava Joachim. Reagan Johnson. Carter Kramer. Bennett the Violet. Peyton LaViolet. (laughs) 
Violet Lund. Isabel Candy Luque. Giselle Malta Ortiz. Diana Martinez. Ruth Esther Martinez Vallegas. Landon McMahon. Anthony Vera. Gerardo Munoz Lopez. Evelyn Murda. Amelia Nimmer. Grace Odie. Matea Ostranga. It's Zuri Ramirez Ayala. Adrian Valentino Rivas. Angelina Marie Rubio. Hallier Asail Sanchez Madera. Remington Shenyan. Nathaniel Schmidt. Caden Seafelt. Tyler Sajinski. Jack Thomas. <clears throat> VNA Torres. Olivia Van Owen. Isabel Margarita Vasquez. Harper Wickland.
Joey Young. Graduates, please stand. Congratulations to the class of 2024. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you in the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go. Go to peace. Go abide in the Lord in your lives. Thanks be to God. Stay my book. Be our angel. Defend us, God. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and standards of the devil. May God be with you. On the bread, do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the divine power of God, for us to develop safety from all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, speaking the ruins of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm.